Welcome, guys, to another Brand Doctor podcast episode. We have an amazing guest today. So listen up. I hope you guys are sitting down. Let me just share with you some of this guy's success. Over the past 12 years, this guy started three companies, which all reached eight figures in revenue. He built his first seven-figure company at the age of 27 while still waiting tables at a restaurant. He's got an email list of over a million subscribers, has grown his podcast to more than 5 million downloads. All of his business has made over $60 million in revenue, and he's been able to do this all from the comfort of his home. Without further ado, I want to introduce my man, Mike Dillard. Thanks for having me, Henry. Much appreciated, brother. Dude, so you are quite the case study, man. You've hmm. had quite a backstory, life-threatening, your life changed, <laughs> you know? I, it was so funny because I've been following you for quite some time, and hmm. I was like, where's Mike been? And, you know, I'm so happy that, you know, you, you, you came back strong. You look fantastic. Uh, for those folks that, that don't quite know who Mike is, quick snap story on how you got to where you're at. Oh gosh. Um, well, I'm 42 now. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur by the time I was in college. That was back in 1996 to 2000. So a long time ago, this is web 1.0 days where, uh, you know, it was an anomaly to see a video online. It was a very big deal. This was pre social media. So I got my start in the network marketing industry in college, which was kind of the, the big business opportunity at the time for, for young people who were broke. <laughs> so uh, I spent about five years in that industry unsuccessfully, didn't make a dime, uh, discovered direct response marketing. And this is when eBooks first started to come out. Corey Rudel, you know, was the first person to really invent a, a PDF eBook back then and found people like Dan Kennedy and uh, a couple of other folks, discovered what copywriting was, and spent about a year, year and a half mastering that skill set. And basically what ended up happening is I ended up teaching internet marketing to the network marketing industry as kind of the, the one of the first people to do that. Mm -hmm. So I uh, taught myself how to use Google AdWords, how to hand code a capture page and build a website and learned how to generate leads and build an email list. And I started doing that for a lot of the people in my upline who were making a lot of money the old fashioned way, but didn't know internet marketing. And I essentially used that as a way to get paid to learn those skills. Wrote a book called Magnetic Sponsoring, which uh, was essentially my little 50 page training guide for my team that took off like crazy in the industry. Uh, I don't know how many copies we've sold hundreds of thousands but i i just had them printed at kinko's for 40 you know i sold them for 40 bucks and uh ended up selling with that ebook and a couple of courses that i wrote after that about 25 million dollars worth of those courses in about four years um once i kind of found that skill set and, and brought it to that world so that's how i got my start oh, i love it i love it so fast forward <laughs> you're you're waiting tables you're, 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 you're trying to grow this business. I'm sure that you found some mentors along the way to sort of fast track all of this. Sure. I want to hear from you how you value mentorship and why it's so important for folks that are in the six, seven, I should say the six figure mark and they want to scale to the seven, eight figure mark. Why mentorship? Why is it a must? Because I, you've, I haven't gotten to eight figures yet, but without my mentors, I would not be where I'm at today. Yeah, that's it. Um, it's a shortcut, you know, learning, learning how to do something from someone who's already done it is the fastest way to get there. That's, that's the bottom line. And you also have to be aware of who you're learning from. And this is a very important lesson that I learned in the network marketing industry because those five years that I failed, I had mentors. 
there were people that were helping me and people that were telling me what to do, but they were wired in a different way. So they were all very extroverted. They loved people. They loved to sell. They loved to speak from stage. And I was very introverted. And so when I would try to pursue their strategies, I would have a lot of resistance. It would never feel good to me. I'd always have to force myself to do it. And I was willing to do that because I wanted the result but it was swimming upstream. And after five years of doing that, I'm like, man, I'm just not cut out for this. I don't, I don't even enjoy it. Even though I got to a point where I started to get results. It's like, if this is what it's going to look like for the next 30 years, this is sucks. I don't want to have anything to do with this. Mm. So that's when I found a different set of mentors. And that's when I found, you know, Dan and Yannick and people like that who were building their businesses in a way that was aligned with my personality type as well. And so instead of me sucking at that business or doing it wrong, I just figured out how my brain was wired, took some personality tests and picked a new category or a new group of mentors who were building it a way that was aligned with me and how I worked. And then that's when things just blew up instantly. And so, picking the right mentors who are aligned again with your personality type and your skill set is unbelievably important. Uh, it's, I think the most important thing that there is. So, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I've been in business for 13 years and I picked a couple, I hate, I'm not going to say any names of course, but I picked a few that were just not on the line. And like every time I got off the coaching call with them or something like that, I would want to kick them in their teeth. Mm. And I didn't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. Like they were, they were breaking me out of my comfort zone clearly. However, their approach, their tone, their, their, uh, what's the word? Delivery. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like it, it just, it, something, something was wrong. Something didn't feel right. And then eventually right. like you, I found somebody who I, you know, really respected and really had the credential, really had the experience. And the one thing I love about this particular mentor of mine who I've spent the past two and a half years with is that he held, he withheld judgment. Mm. I come from a very judgy family. Mm. I'm, you know, East Coast Jersey guy, mm -hmm. you know, like, forget it. Like if, if you're not making a million dollars, then, you know, I'm not right. listening to you, right? Yeah. And here's a guy who made multi millions. This little guy called Henry comes along and says, I want to learn from you and I'm willing to do what it takes. And I might have said a few things on those calls that he might have looked at me and like, is this guy crazy? <laughs> right. But he, he just withheld all of that judgment and helped me get to where I wanted to be. Hmm. And that was really powerful for me. And, you know, sure. to the point that I'm actually speaking about it today on the, on the show, yeah. Yeah. you know, so what are some of the ways, so you said that the, your, 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 your values have to align, right? The approach, um, the, the style, style. Yeah. yeah, the style. So what, what types of, um, did you take like the disc and, and those types of disc and Myers Briggs and and you know at the end of the day what I figured out is I am I was an introvert in an extrovert's industry. There is no other industry that is better suited to an extrovert than the network marketing industry, right? <laughs> That's what the entire business is built upon is taking you know shaking hands and kissing babies and all of that stuff, especially yeah. back in that day. And that was the last place I should have been. Um, so just being honest with yourself as far as how you're wired, I think is step number one. Mm. Another example of this would be, uh, you know, and what, which skill you're going to pursue first. And I always have taught that the secret to success, if you will, is mastering a skill. That's what enables you to take action. Action leads to results. Results leads to confidence and momentum, and it just snowballs onto itself. And so, well, great. There's a lot of skills to choose from in the entrepreneurial space. Deciding which skill you want to focus on is the second most important piece of the puzzle here. Uh, you know, for example, I am, am very much a cookie cutter visionary. If you, uh, if y'all have ever read, you know, rocket fuel, 
Uh, there's the visionary and the integrator. I'm very much an idea visionary and I very much like to write. I could sit here all day for eight hours and just write in silence and be completely happy with that. Um, if you asked me or told me that I needed to go learn how to master the Facebook ad platform or Google Analytics, I would shoot myself. <laughs> so if I'm going to sit here and try to run or build a social media ad agency or a Facebook ad agency that is going to have me doing that all day, I might see someone, especially if I'm beginning and see that, hey, that person's having success. I want to go do that because I know that they're making money. So I know it's possible. And that's what I told myself back when I was getting started, hey, my mentor and my upline is making 50 grand a month. I'm going to go learn this until I'm doing that. And that could potentially be another, another trap and another major mistake. So you have to choose a skill set that is really aligned with how you're built once again. Uh, luckily for me, I, I discovered that mine was copywriting and that was the first skill that I mastered. I spent about 18 months every single day practicing copy learning the ins, the outs, the scripts, the psychology, the frameworks, all of it. Every single day I'd write out uh, existing sales letters by hand for an hour or two. Had a bookshelf just filled with books, binders, and courses on everything I can get my hands on with that topic. And I just got it. It just clicked in my head. Uh, but again, if you told me to go set up a, an ad campaign on Facebook right now, I wouldn't know what to do and I wouldn't want to do it. Yeah. So I think that's another big piece. Damn good copywriter too. I get all your emails. And I'm Thanks. Like, Jesus, this guy's yeah. good. <laughs> but that's the thing. That's just easy for me. I just get it. And for other people, uh, they, they'll, they struggle mightily with it. And it's just so you got to find your lane basically and figure out what you really enjoy. Yeah, I think it's so important that you, that you mention finding that skill set first mm -hmm. before you try to get out there and position yourself as the expert. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what a, that's where the pitchforks come out these days is where these folks try to get out there a little too soon. Listen, I'm, I'm guilty of that. You know, when click when click funnels first came out, I was the first one to go to Russell as a designer and pay him top notch to say, Hey, I, I want to learn from you. You know, I'll, I'll give you mm -hmm. my last cent mm -hmm. because I see this opportunity and, you know, he did what he did and I got out there and I started charging maybe a little too soon. Mm. And, you know, a couple of projects went to hell in a handbasket. Yep. And Russell came back to me and said, dude, you're my, you know, you're my responsibility because you're in my coaching program. But if you do this a couple more times, you might have to pick something else to do. Yeah. This is way too small of a community. Right. And uh, I, my eyes went <laughs> you saw the whites in my eyes and I said, you know what? I need to, I need to slow down yeah. and really master this craft. And so I went into hiding, if you will, mm -hmm. and just kept sharpening the ax, kept sharpening nice. the ax, seeing yeah. where the deficiencies were, finding somebody like, like you, like at the time, copywriting wasn't my thing. Strategy mm -hmm. wasn't my thing. So what did I do? I hired Mike Shreve at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I got connected with a strategist and started to learn everything I possibly could. Now, eventually, they start to rub off on you. And now you start to build that confidence. And then you get out there and it's a whole different ball game. So right. I know that you are creating this phenomenal mentorship program. And mm -hmm. I want to spend a, the rest of the time that we have together talking about this mentorship program. Sure how, why you started it, who's it for, mm -hmm. and why should somebody join it? Yeah, you know, it's really, uh, it's my way of giving back to the brand new people who are getting into entrepreneurship. And it's essentially built for those folks who were where I was in my early 20s, broke, but they have the desire and ambition. They don't necessarily know who to listen to or what to do next. They're overwhelmed. They're confused. And the first thing you need to know is that's a natural part of the process. So feeling overwhelmed and confused happens to every single one of us. And what happens is you're consuming all of this information from all of these different people. And you will, over time, you're starting to distill that. Your brain's starting to distill that into and filter out what's important, what's not important. And that happens to 
everybody. And so first and foremost, know that that's normal. Uh, and, you know, back uh, when I was getting started again, waiting tables at a PF Chang's, I didn't have a lot of money. Um, and so I wanted to really create something that takes people through all of the foundations of owning a business. And when you look at starting a business today, you typically only see it from one specific topic or skill set. And that's because you're going to find a person or an expert online who's selling a course or a product on usually how to do one single thing for a thousand to two thousand dollars, whatever it may be. Not that there's, I mean, that's that's great, that's totally fine, but it's a super super narrow focus. After doing this for you know almost 20 years now and having the the kind of success that I've had, that's 10 to 10 percent of a business. Uh, so for me, what I really wanted to do is just take people by the hand every single week over the course of a year and go through every single part that is involved when it comes to building a successful company. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, an entire lesson on uh, legal basics, how to set up an LLC. It's, you know, it's two hours long with my business attorney. Uh, you know, your terms and conditions, your disclaimers, your privacy policies, your entity creation, uh, you know, all of that stuff is covered. Uh, we eventually get into every single type of, of advertising. We get into building a, a, a creative brief and a brand brief, right? Uh, my friend Ron Lynch uh, filmed that for us, and he is the one who did the original marketing campaign for GoPro. He's done billions in sales for Samsung's products. And so what Mark's going to teach you, what Ron is going to teach you how to do is basically how do you come up with that original creative brief that defines your customer avatar, problems, desires, what makes you unique, what what's, makes your competition unique, where are the holes, where are the gaps, what's your business model going to look like? And that's, a, I think, in our third week, that's a topic that I cover. Where's the single biggest point of leverage in your industry and in your business? Because what people get really focused on in the beginning, they don't even know that this is a question to ask. They just see someone to model, oh, that so-and-so person did a course on that. I want to do that. But once, you, once you've done that, you may have built a bridge to nowhere and a business to nowhere that's capped. And uh, especially if you're doing coaching or consulting. And so I like to ask a question or have my students ask a question, which is where is the single biggest point of leverage that you can identify? And I always use real estate for this example. Uh, there are tens of thousands of real estate agents who are working their tails off every day to make money. And they're basically salespeople mm -hmm. uh, on a commission, fully commissioned basis. And so how much leverage do they have? They have zero leverage and you can't get rich without leverage. The next level up would be, okay, what brokerage is that agent working for? Well, that broker, you know, here in Austin, Moreland Properties is a, is a big one, might uh, have 20 agents that works under them. Well, that broker's now got a much bigger point of leverage. He's getting paid on the actions of 20 agents. Well, then who's the next level point of leverage above that? It's probably the bank that they work with to provide all the mortgages, right? And so if you can at least map that out from day one, and say, where's the greatest point of leverage in this? Another example would be YouTube. Uh, YouTube, the smallest amount of leverage are the individuals and the creators who are working their tails off every single day to create content to upload it to YouTube, right? The next level of leverage would be a syndicate or an agency who is managing and helping run maybe 20 influencer or YouTube celebrities accounts, right? They're doing brand deals for them. They're doing marketing for them, but they're getting leverage on 20 famous YouTubers activities every single day instead of just their own private ones. And then obviously the greatest amount of leverage on there is YouTube and Google itself, the owners of the platform who are getting paid on every single view every single day. So I want people to think about that from the very beginning so that they, at least they have a vision on where they should go. And if there is no point of leverage in that industry, maybe that's not an industry you should get involved in. Maybe you should look for a different opportunity. So we talk about things like that, and then we, we get into the personal development side of things. We get into morning routines. We get into productivity. We did an entire class with Jay Papazon, uh, who is uh, a good friend here in Austin and works uh, for, a you know, I think a, 
$50 billion real estate company here in Austin, one of the top, top firms uh, in, the, in the world. And their entire corporate uh, infrastructure, if you will, is built around a, a process called the one thing. So what is the single one thing, activity that you can do on a daily basis that will move you forward the most? And how do you determine what that one thing is? And that's where a lot of people get stuck every day. I've got 20 things to work on. What do I choose? And so we did an entire class with Jay on the one thing process to teach you know, all of our students how to do that, right? And then we, we move and have a class with Russell. Russell and I walk you through building a funnel. Um, and so it just goes on and on. We eventually get into investing. We get into asset protection. Uh, we get into what to do with the money that your business makes. We get into taxes. Uh, all, we get into to your personal stories. Once you hit a, a, you know, a certain level in business, let's say usually around seven figures, the skills that got you to seven figures are not going to do you any good to get you to eight figures. They're, in fact, the skills you need to get to eight figures are the complete opposite of what you need to do to get to seven. Seven, all you need is great offer and the ability to sell. To get to eight, now it's about people, teamwork, culture, hiring, firing, and all of that other stuff. And so Alex Sharfin's a good friend. We did a whole bunch of classes with him on how do you scale from one to seven, then seven to eight, then eight to nine. And so that's the concept. It's the not so sexy side of building a business mm -hmm. that isn't you know really talked about on a daily basis and yet creates the core fundamental foundation for everything that you do moving forward uh, so that was really the goal and the concept behind it and i think what makes it the most unique mentoring opportunity out there is the fact that i teach maybe 10 percent of the lessons 90 percent of the content out of the 52 weeks is produced by my colleagues and peers that i've mentioned and so why did I do that? Well, I'm not the expert in those categories. If you want to learn about, you know, legal business basics, you need to learn that from my business attorney. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to learn about funnels, well, let's learn from Russell. If you want to learn copywriting, great. John Benson, you know, came and sat and came to Austin and did an entire class on copywriting. He's the guy who invented the video sales letter, right? He's one of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's really the concept in the project. It's just to provide new business owners with the most solid foundation that we could possibly offer. Um, and that's, that's what we're doing these days. Was that your leverage? Was that your leverage point making relationships with other experts in their field, bringing them on board and saying, listen, this is my mission. This is my vision. Would you want to be part of it? And, and go from there. Is that, was that your example of leveraging yeah, the original concept, you know, this started uh, as an idea for to build out an entire education platform like Skillshare, but okay. for entrepreneurs. Okay. And getting, uh, you know, building custom software is an entire skill set in and of itself. And that is a very, very, very expensive and very risky endeavor. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it got to a point, well, and that was the concept, yes, was to build the platform where the best entrepreneurs in the world could come share their expertise and everybody could help each other. But yes, that essentially, the question is, how do you become the game board that you're playing on where everybody else is a chess piece on your board? Yeah. Most people are worried about being the chess piece, uh, but the person who owns the board is really the, at the highest point of leverage. Right. So I built the board. And, uh, and then I went through my health crisis and got sick about, uh, you know, two, three months after we launched and everything kind of changed. And so now we've, we've gotten rid of the, uh, the, you know, the multimillion dollar software platform, if you will. And we've focused on the content and creating a, a year long journey and experience for folks that, you know, has a little bit of gamification. So we've set milestones in place because ultimately I don't care about just selling the mentoring program. I want you to get a result yeah. and I want to get a testimonial from you because you got a result. And the only way we'd get that is if you consume the content. Right. And so we've put a bunch of incentives in there for folks to actually consume the content, get the value from it, use it, leverage it. And, uh, and that's where our focus is today is really on just getting people to actually learn the knowledge and use the skills. So I, I love it. Could you give an example of an incentive? Cause my grip, my, my wife's grandfather 
preaches. So I have a two and a half year old son and, mm. and, 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 and pop is constantly talking about how incentivization is the way you raise your children. So <laughs> I'm a huge fan of this. I use it with my team as well, but what would be an example of how you incentivize some of these people in the group? Yeah. So the first milestone is a pretty big one. Uh, you know, in order to make money in a business, you have to learn how to sell, period. Like that's the one common skill everybody has to learn no matter what. And uh, a couple of years ago, I wrote a really extensive copywriting course called Seven Figure Sales Presentation that I sold for $1,000. And it was essentially my framework for writing webinars and sales videos that have sold that $60 million that my businesses have made. And so we've sold that you know, consistently for a thousand dollars a piece. And we decided that that's going to be the first milestone. So if somebody watches the first eight weeks of the course, you know, first eight hours of lessons, uh, they basically get that entire class for free or that master class for free. So it's a big, it's a big carrot, uh, for folks. And, um, you know, we're putting together the rest of them as we go through who are here throughout the year. I'm not sure what the big final one will be for the folks who finish all 52 weeks, but uh, I'm sure it will be pretty awesome. And yeah, that's it for me. I just, again, I want you to watch the first eight weeks because I know if you watch the first eight weeks, usually by week two or three, we're getting testimonials from people mm. and they're like done. You know, this is worth the entire year's tuition by week three. So we want to get you to at least eight and incentivize you with that thousand dollar bonus. So. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And the investment is so digestible, palpable, whatever you want to call it. Like, uh, I don't know what it, where it's at now, but uh, it doesn't matter. Where can people go to enroll? Uh, yeah, so you can just go to MikeDillardMentoring.com. And there's a little, a little quiz or survey. We're going to ask you a couple of questions that are going to, it's going to tell me a little bit about you, your business, what you want to accomplish. And that's for, you know, our internal use so that we can make sure we're, we're serving everybody based on where they're at. Um, and as far as price goes, <laughs> I don't know if this is a good decision or not, but ultimately it's, it's for beginners, so it's unbelievably cheap. It's a 52 week long mentoring program for 97 bucks a month or 600 bucks for the year. Plus the bonuses if you hit those milestones and everything else that we've put in there. So uh, it's really designed for the beginner and folks who are you know, looking to replace their income, fire their boss and have their big breakthrough. So yeah. Guys, that's a no brainer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you heard it from the man himself and the people that he connected with to build this it reminds me of um a great way to get education out there and not try to act like you know it all and that is really admirable it's it's impressive it's why i reached out to you in the first place because mm. There's too many people out there that are just trying to put up this front. And at the end of the day, behind all closed doors, you know, they're, they're mental messes. And yeah. it, 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 it sucks because you walk away from that relationship like, oh, man, that's just a facade out there, isn't it? And, you know, you put yourself out there pretty much, even as an introvert, not so flashy, not so in your face but you still put yourself out there enough for people to get a glimpse. And it looks like you're really walking the talk and, and talking the walk, which I really admire. Yeah. You know, you know, one of the things we talk about in the program <laughs> is, is my bombs, my landmines that I've stepped on. And a lot of people don't talk about that. I've, I've lost millions of dollars multiple times. And if you are an entrepreneur, if you're pushing yourself, uh, you know, once you've reached milestone one, if you really want to push yourself into milestone two, um, you're going to step on some, some landmines. It's inevitable. And how do you avoid those? How do you spot them? And then what do you do once it happens, I think is a really important conversation that nobody talks about because they're too afraid to, you know, they think that that looks like weakness. Um, you know, for me, that's battle scars. Yeah. So 
um, I'm, I guess the tour guide with the arrows in the back rather than the, the, the new green one that just showed up and all still shiny and clean. I, but, love, uh, I love it. Yeah. So. I, love, I mean, I think that's how we learn, mm-hmm. you know, is, is through, I forget what that, I forget what that quote is. I'm going to butcher it. You know, uh, someone who's not smart learns from their own mistakes, but the ones that are yeah. truly wise learn from others' mistakes, right? I think exactly. something along those lines, right? Yep. Yeah. It, it makes so much sense. Uh, what kind of support is there um, uh, outside of the courses, outside of the, the actual material that they're, that, that they're, is there a Facebook group that they get into and, you know, they have access to you or something? Yeah, like that? we're going to start doing monthly live, monthly live coaching calls where I'll jump on and answer people's questions. Um, that's always been a part of the plan. It just for, uh, for me, from a health perspective, that hasn't been practical until the last couple of months. Mm. So that's going to start here next month. And, uh, you know, that's a fun way for me to jump in with folks. And, you know, I have a lot of students that eventually reach out and, you know, quite a few of them have physical e-commerce products. Uh, some of them have info products, but they're making sales, whether it's on Amazon or whatever despite the fact that their business is 5% of what it could be. And so a lot of times uh, in the Facebook group that we do have, people will talk about what they're doing, ask questions. And if I see the right people, I'll just jump in and start working with those individuals, you know, on a a personal basis uh, to help them grow and build their businesses. Sometimes we partner up, sometimes we don't. Uh, We just do a a coaching or consulting uh, arrangement. But that's been super fun um, and it's fun for them. It's fun for me, the, the growth that they're having, super awesome. But from a, a group perspective, to answer your question, yeah, the, the live monthly calls are, are really the, uh, the biggest way that I get to talk to everybody, so. That's awesome, that's yeah. awesome. What do you, okay, so two questions if you got a couple extra minutes here. Sure. One question is, what do you tell somebody who's mid six figures, uh, just about, you know, just breaking through, maybe hits that million dollar mark, but it's not really consistent and is looking to, to get into that seven figure level more consistently. Mm. Not you, we could talk in a whole nother episode about that. Right. But what are the top three things that person should be paying attention to or putting into some sort of daily routine or to, to help them get there? Yeah. Um, the first thing that, well, the first thing that comes to mind is once you're, once you hit seven figures, it's actually, there's two things that you need to consider. What's your long-term plan and what's the shelf life of your product? If your product was, how to, you know, uh, do Facebook ads, that's going to be out of date in six months to 12 months because they're constantly updating their user interfaces. Uh, You know, the algorithms are changing, the strategies are changing, and that becomes a hamster wheel that you cannot get off of. Uh, And I know that because having done internet marketing courses for, for 12 years now, those courses usually have a shelf life of about two years. That sucks after a while. That gets really old after a while. And so my piece of advice to folks who are doing the course thing is how do you choose to build a business that offers training and help in a, in a more evergreen fashion with content that is not going to go out of date? Because if it goes out of date, you're constantly having to rebuild the sandcastle that gets washed away and you never get to work on the next piece and leverage that and build upon it. It's just a constant rebuilding period. It's kind of like Richard Branson's Necker Island. A hurricane comes in and washes it away every three years and he's got to rebuild the place, right? So, uh, so the first thing that you need to really think about is, okay, I sold seven figures worth of this product. Now what? And really taking a long-term view of that business, and I'd say 10 years, is what you want to think about. And I would only take actions and develop products or services that are going to last at least 10 years and not depend on your personal participation to have to remake 
or redo something, whatever it may be, because then there is no leverage. You're just a high paid employee still at that point. It's dependent upon you, right? The next question uh, or warning that you need to be aware of once you hit seven figures, especially if you did it quickly and you have an offer that's doing really great in the marketplace, that is not a time to celebrate. That is a time to get scared because, and I can tell you this from my own personal experience, watching this happen with my colleagues and friends, the more successful your offer is in the market, the faster you're going to go through the, the, the top creme de la creme, if your target audience, if you will, your first rapid buyers. And as soon as you go through that, that group of individuals, your cost to acquire a customer goes up and up and up, right? Um, it's dim law of diminishing returns. And so when we've had several massive successful offers in our business, you know, we did $10 million in our first year in my last company, an offer that was everywhere. And then all of a sudden it starts dropping down, costs a little bit more to acquire customers, customer acquisition goes down, costs go up again until you have what a point where it just breaks even. And then now you have to pull the plug in your ad campaigns or you have affiliates who are spending money on media, making commissions. And as soon as they break even, they pull their, their ad money and sales just come to a halt at that point. And so that happens to every single offer period. And the more successful it is, the faster you're going to go through that cycle. So if you have a really successful offer, the shelf life of that is two to three years. That's it, period. So how do you get around that? Well, there's two ways to get around it. First, you use retargeting, you know, based advertising to where the top of your funnel is just content only ads. It would be content like this that's not selling anything. That way, you're constantly reaching and growing and expanding your audience with just new content every week, every time you put up a new YouTube video, Facebook video, whatever it may be. And it's just content only. And so people are not getting burned out on your ads. Now you're only going to show your offer ads to the people who are engaging consistently with that content. And so in the past, we would put our offer ads everywhere, all over the internet, because it converted. But then everyone in the world has seen it. That's when you get recognized at Whole Foods and at an airport and in a hotel. When that starts to happen, that means everyone in the world is seeing your stuff and the offer is just going to start to decline even faster. So you can, you can prevent that from happening by only showing your offers to the group of people who are engaging the most with your top level content that is constantly changing and that never gets old because it's new, it's fresh, it's valuable every single week. Um, the other way to get around that is to do what, let's say Marie Forleo does, where she only launches her product once a year, right? She launches B-School one week every year. That's her entire business. Um, so her entire company is built around updating the product, building her audience. And that one week a year, they generate, you know, five to $10 million in revenue, maybe more. Uh, and that's it. And so there, there's no, there's no chance of that becoming tiresome mm. on a daily basis, right? And so these are the types of lessons that you're not going to hear unless you've been through the trenches like I have or somebody else has who's been doing this for 15 years and, mm. and experienced that on multiple occasions. Mm. Um, so I hope that answered your question. That was a, a little bit of well, a Well, you did bit. too. Where's, what's the third one? What's the third Thing that somebody needs at that level needs to be paying attention to or implementing or executing? Uh, money discipline. So having a plan for your money. Uh, for most people, that's the first time you've made that much money in your life, most likely in your family tree, and you don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And the mistake that you're going to make is that you're going to think that that money is going to continue to come in like that consistently forever. You start to build a confirmation bias in your brain where you see deposit, 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 day after day, month after month, year after year. And that confirmation bias just becomes the, the new normal for you. And so you start to spend that money like it's not going to stop. Mm -hmm. And then it does stop. And then you're screwed because you've built an office, you've hired a team, you've bought a house, you've bought three cars, you've bought all of this other stuff. And uh, that's not a fun, that's not a fun lesson to learn. So, you know, I'd highly recommend uh, a book called uh, from Mike McCallowitz called Profit First. 
who talks about this exact same cycle. This is not unique. This probably happens to 80 to 90% of entrepreneurs until you learn the lesson. I got that t-shirt twice. Yeah. Yeah. Twice. Same. Yeah. Same. And, and Mike has it as well. And so he ended up writing a book about this and setting up a very simple methodology and system that's made for entrepreneurs that essentially provides them with a framework and a, a system to save, conserve, and deploy their money uh, in a really simple manner that doesn't require a lot of discipline and that it, it just builds wealth for you and automatically and it keeps yourself from getting into trouble. Uh, so that would be the third one. I love it. I love it. I yeah. love it. I love it. Awesome. Last question. Let's go into the future 80, mm -hmm. 80 years from now. Mm -hmm. How do you want to be, how do you want Mike Dillard to be remembered? Um, I just say genuinely helpful. Uh, my biggest thrill is hearing from students of mine that have had their lives changed by a book or a course that I've written. And I've had, I mean, I've had a lot of them over the years where people have built bigger companies than I have, you know, folks that you know, found my book 10 years ago and who now run companies with a hundred employees and, you know, do a hundred million dollars in revenue. Mm. So to me, that's my biggest uh, thrill. And the more people that I can be the catalyst uh, to really help create that opportunity, that's my biggest joy and what I love to do. So I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So be genuinely helpful. Yeah. More yeah. people need to follow your lead. <laughs> <laughs> So I know you, uh, I know you are, um, so guys, don't forget, get, uh, Mike, give them the website again to go check out yeah. this mentoring program. Sure. MikeDillardMentoring.com. Done. I know you are really pushing forward this year to build up your podcast studio and to really mm -hmm. get that going. If you are interested in looking for any more talent, I would love to come on the show and be any sort of value, uh, cool. to to you. Um, I, I, I listened to a bunch of episodes, Rob Dial being one of my favorite mm -hmm. episodes. Um, if there's any, if you're looking for that, I would be more than cool. happy to, to yeah, help that'd out be great. in any way. Awesome. Um, guys, reach out to Mike. This mentorship program is worth every single penny, if not more. The return on your investment is going to be tremendous. Like you heard Mike say, he doesn't leave any rock unturned here when it comes to this program. Shit, I wish I had this program when I started my business. I'd probably yeah. be doing this from a yacht somewhere in Port Lauderdale. <laughs> yeah. But um, Mike, I appreciate you going a little extra here and uh, sure. spending time with us today and uh, really enjoyed the conversation. I hope our audience got some value out of this. Likewise, so, Henry. Thanks for having me so much. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Mike. Take, Take care. care, guys. Thank you.